Hello guys, welcome to Commercial Law Tutorials. Under this topic, Introduction to Law, we looked at the definition of law and the characteristics of law. Next, we looked at the purposes of law, then the reasons why people obey the law. And today we are moving on to lesson number four. We are going to look at the principles of just law. In this lesson, I will list and explain the principles of just law, which are also called the postulates of justice or the requirements of just law. For law to be considered to be truly just and fair, it is required to have these principles we are talking about. The principles of just law are equality, uniformity, certainty, authority, and reasonableness. But before explaining these principles of just law in detail, let me first of all give you a few examples of just laws to make our lesson easier to comprehend. For instance, laws that limit amount of alcohol one can take before driving. And also, one should not be on his or her cell phone while driving. Then, everyone should never drink alcohol while driving. The other good example is the one of traffic laws, like speed limits, zebra crossings and giveaway signs, as illustrated below. During the lesson, you can always refer to these two examples I have just given you. If somehow you are being lost, these are good examples where law is truly just and fair. Now into our lesson. The first principle which we are going to look at today is equality. Everyone should be treated equally by the law and all people are subject to the same law. Law consists of rules which apply to all persons in the same condition. Thus, law is the same for each and everyone in the country. Just laws do not discriminate. They are therefore applied equally to all people. And the enforcement of law must also be equal. Taking a look at our first example of the law which limits the amount of alcohol one can take before driving. We realize that surely everyone is subject to that law. We can never say some people are special and are allowed to drink loads and then drive. As driving under the influence puts everyone's lives at stake. So, everyone is subject to law, including lawmakers, law enforcement agents and judges. Thus, whether poor or rich, employer or employee, all men are the same under the eyes of the law. We have exceptions though, where this principle of equality do not apply. Exceptions of these principles are insanity and minors. They have their own categories under law in which they are tried. Now, let me give you an example where equality in law is taking place. Yeso is driving a car, Leah is walking down the road, Lucy is on the motorbike while Anna is cycling. These are people governed by different laws applicable to the different categories of each road user. Hence, rules that are binding on one may not be applicable to the other. But, if Grace drives a Ford and Faye drives a Toyota car, this is immaterial to law. Both are in the same category. They are both motorists. Hence, application of rules of drunk and driving or negligence while driving will be the same. The next principle is uniformity. Law should be uniform. Uniformity conveys that all people in all areas in a given state or nation should be treated uniformly. 
application of law should not vary from one town to the other in a country. It won't be just. Therefore, the same law that applies to a person in the town of Umtari should apply to a person in the capital city Harare if they have committed the same offence in Zimbabwe. If a person is a foreigner and commits a crime, that person is charged according to the laws of that country. I will give you two examples. The first one is that if a foreigner and a citizen commits murder, they should be treated the same way even if the crimes were committed in different towns in that country. Then the second one is that uniformity is the reason why law also gives a guideline of sanctions and punishments which can be given to people. For instance, fraud cases of certain amount requires a lesser jail term than that of a greater amount. One who defrauds another 10,000 US dollars is in his own category, which is different from one who defrauds another 1 million dollars. The judgments are preset in law according to the range of money involved, and it's well known to all judges so as to maintain uniformity in the nation. Then, certainty. The next principle we are going to look at is certainty. Law should be certain. This is a principle of just law, which was that it is the requirement of law that it should be clear to all. Under the principle of certainty, law is expected to state what a person must, may, and must not do. What the law is all about should be well clear. Thus, what should and what should not be done must be undoubtedly outlined. Thus, people act knowing clearly the legal consequences of any particular course of action they are involved in. For instance, fraud, money laundering and tax evasion is not allowed while doing business. Therefore, under certainty, law is required to be formulated in clear and an ambiguous way, meaning that the law should be understandable and very clear to everyone. Secondly, law must be promulgated or known. Promulgation of law refers to the publication of a new law to make everyone in the country aware of that new law. Let's take a look at Zimbabwe promulgation in detail as our example. In Zimbabwe, if new laws are published in the government gazette, the law is considered to be well known. Thus, the legal maxim, ignorantia less name name excuse that, meaning ignorance of law excuses no one, is said to apply. This concept has been criticized in that not all people have access to the Gazette. Some people are not literate enough to understand the Gazette. And so many laws are promulgated in Zimbabwe that people cannot even know them all. Right now in Zimbabwe, regardless of these concerns, the maxim still stands. But positively, in Zimbabwe, social media platforms like Twitter and WhatsApp are being yent on dealing with these concerns as people are quickly updated on new laws and bills in a very short period of time, thus helping in promulgation of laws. Authority denotes that all laws set in the country should be applied by only bodies given the authority to do so. Authority is a principle which recognizes that for law to be enforceable, truly some given body with authority and power to enforce those laws should be present. Surely, everyone in the country cannot enforce the law and punish perpetrators as there will be huge confusion 
only responsible bodies who are guided also by the law in their enforcement of the law should do so. Therefore, to avoid confusion in a state, authority denotes that all laws set in the country should be applied by only bodies given the authority to do so. Hence, authority refers to all the people who have been given the authority by parliament to enforce law equally and uniformly to all the people in various areas of the country. As a result, people are expected to report crimes rather than personally pushing for justice on their own. For instance, if a thief is caught in the act and a group of affected people beat up that person until he dies, the group is charged with murder even if the thief was surely caught because those people do not have the authority to enforce justice let alone give a death sentence for any crime committed. This requirement in law helps to reduce mob justice and gang attacks on innocent people who are just hated by others. Thus, upholding everyone's liberties and rights, because even a criminal has rights. Hence, law states that the accused is innocent until proven guilt. There are various bodies with authority and powers to oversee, enforce laws and maintain order in our communities. These include the chiefs, councils, police and the judges. Lastly, reasonableness. Reasonableness is required in law. The law should be truly reasonable. The law should make sense. The law should be sensible, rational, realistic, and practical. In law, reasonableness is often referred to as reasonableness to a reasonable person, reasonable time. These are the commonly used phrases in our legal system. These phrases stresses the fact that any decision given should be reasonable to any reasonable person. The phrases are used in different decisions by the courts and in resolving disputes pertaining to the law of contract. Therefore, in the legal system, reasonableness in law answers the question that is the ultimate decision at any given time suitable? Is it appropriate, just, proper, fair, and usual? Practical laws which are sensible and rational are the ones that the people who wholeheartedly obey. But if the laws are not, people find other ways to fulfill their needs while breaking the law. For instance, if a country has a stipulated exchange rate for its currency, which is not practical at the given market demand and supply chains, black market will sprout firstly, where the practical rate will be used. People will ignore the government stipulated exchange rate and use their own secretly. This will in turn destroy the currency of that country completely. Therefore, at any given time, if the legal system expects those to whom law applies to be reasonable, then surely law itself should be reasonable. Because if laws are not reasonable at all, when they are silly, strange, and senseless, people disobey them. Hence, reasonableness is one of the main requirements for any just law. That was all I had for you. To wind up my lesson, I will now list for you some popular exam questions relating to this lesson. Identify and explain the five principles of just law. Examine the principles of just law. Explain the postulates of justice. What are the requirements of just law? Thank you so much for watching.
If you have enjoyed this lesson, subscribe so that you won't miss my next lesson. Like and comment below if you have any suggestions or questions.